All right, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the first uh, weekly tropical weather discussion of 2020. Um, so I'm going to do these every Monday morning, uh, at least that's the goal for the rest of the summer, the rest of the uh, hurricane season. Um, and the goal here is just to give you a quick overview of what the week ahead in tropical weather might look like, whether we have any threats of, of uh, tropical storms or hurricanes on the horizon. Um, and then we'll do more spe storm-specific discussions uh, as, uh, as storms pop up and, and uh, there's more to talk about. So. Uh, to start off here, of course, this is the only named storm active in the Atlantic Basin right now. Um, this is Tropical Storm Cristobal, uh, moving north uh, through portions of uh, western Mississippi. Uh, this uh, storm is going to be moving uh, basically up the Mississippi Valley this week. Uh, so you can track it here in the uh, weathermodels.com uh, comparator um, tool here. And you can see there the storm is uh, right over western Mississippi. This is uh, 8 a.m on uh, Monday here, uh, and then uh, as we move uh, forward in time, it's going to drift sort of north-northwest into Arkansas, uh, through uh, Missouri, uh, into eastern Iowa, and then eventually into Wisconsin and uh, over the UP of Michigan. Uh, so this is actually a uh, fairly rare track for a tropical cyclone to take, um, and the reason that it's not moving farther east, right, normally we'd see a storm make landfall in Louisiana and then it'd curve uh, sort of up the uh, Mississippi River Valley, then it'd go over the Ohio River Valley and then out into the northeast. Um, the reason that we're not seeing that is there's this uh, large ridge of high pressure off to the east of the storm, uh, and that's actually going to keep it uh, sort of moving more north than northeast. So uh, that's why this is going to be a rare uh, tropical cyclone uh, uh, track uh, out into uh, parts of the upper Midwest. Uh, so you can see there the uh, the storm is moving uh, sort of between this trough uh, coming in from the Rockies and this ridge which is departing into the northeast. Uh, and actually the uh, the center of the system is going to be moving over James Bay by Wednesday. So definitely don't see tropical cyclones move uh, up into James Bay very often. Um, it, it will not in fact be a uh, technically a tropical cyclone uh, at that point in this life cycle. It'll be more of an extratropical system, but uh, nevertheless, uh, interesting to see that pocket of moisture. Uh, precipitable water values over two inches uh, would be very unusual even down in the northeast, let alone all the way up uh, in James Bay, uh, parts of northern Quebec. So, uh, interesting system here. The main impact uh, at this point is going to be heavy rain. You can see that a batch of heavy rain here in the dark green moving up uh, alongside the storm center. It's going to start to shift over towards the west of the storm center. Uh, while most of the gusty winds, uh, possibly in excess of 50 miles an hour, all the way up into uh, the Great Lakes region, will be focused uh, toward the east of the system. So uh, watch out for a few power outages, uh, flooding in the spots that usually see flooding, um, especially with a shorter duration heavy rain event. Um, but thankfully, this isn't going to be the kind of system that stalls out and uh, produces prolific rainfall. Uh, total. So um, a quick uh, guesstimate by the ECMWF model generally showing two to four inches of rain falling along the track of the storm here. Uh, so again, that'll flood some of the smaller rivers and streams, any low-lying areas that are typically vulnerable to high water. Uh, expect uh, to see some water there, um, but otherwise this is not a, a prolific flooding event. Um, so that's uh, something to be thankful for. Um, eventually, uh, of course, by the time we get into uh, Thursday, really the system is is uh, gone up into uh, James Bay, uh, and there'll uh, there'll be basically no more impacts from Cristobal to the U.S. So, uh, anything uh, sort of on the horizon past Cristobal? Well. Uh, a good place to start looking um, is the uh, ECMWF uh, ensemble system here. So this is uh, going to be uh, 51 ensemble members uh, doing their best to predict uh, what's going to happen in the future. Uh, and uh, the more tightly uh, sort of compact these lines are, right, uh, so this is the forecast for this afternoon. Obviously, you can see there's Cristobal. Uh, very good agreement uh, among all ensemble members that Cristobal is going to be centered over uh, the sort of uh, southeastern part of Arkansas, far northeastern Louisiana, far western Mississippi. Uh, so that's an example of good ensemble agreement. Of course, as we move out farther into time, we see uh, a little bit more disagreement. So we know the system's going to be somewhere up here, but not don't know exactly where or exactly how strong. Uh, so as far as tropical cyclone threats, uh, well, the first one to note here is uh, these this collection of little circles uh, east of Bermuda. This is actually associated with a subtropical system, um, so we'll take a closer look at that here. Uh, basically, we have this uh, this uh, fully non-tropical cyclone over 
um, parts of the Canadian Maritimes. It has a, a cold front extending south uh, of the system, and a little back, you know, a, a bit of that cold front is basically going to get cut off from the rest of the system. So you can see that the main storm is, is departing here off of uh, Newfoundland, um, but then there's this sort of southern extension. And that southern extension is going to briefly get caught in between the ridge steering Cristobal up towards James Bay and another ridge of high pressure um, sort of northwest uh, of the Azores. Uh, and that will allow it to sit over uh, marginally warm waters for uh, about a day or a day and a half um, before it uh, sort of dissipates. Uh, and during that time, it is uh, you know, uh, theoretically possible that the system could attain, uh, obtain uh, tropical characteristics or subtropical characteristics. So... Uh, as, as far as uh, possibilities for the next named storm, this is uh, perhaps our first opportunity, though I don't think it's necessarily likely that this will get the name Dolly, um, but uh, it's something to keep an eye on. Um, no impacts to land at all. It's just going to sort of spin itself out over the uh, northwestern Atlantic. You can see there that it, it fizzles out uh, before it uh, nears uh, any, any land mass. So uh, not an impactful storm, but uh, as far as uh, named storm headlines, uh, that would be one to watch. The uh, Hurricane Center currently gives it a 10% chance of development, so again, not uh, something uh, particularly imminent. Uh, so going back to the uh, ensembles here, uh, what would be our next uh, shot at some, uh, some tropical activity? Well, uh, we basically have uh, the rest of the week uh, dead quiet, every ensemble member in good agreement that we don't have anything to worry about um, until perhaps uh, this coming weekend. And you can see a few, if you look down here, a few circles emerging in the Western Caribbean. Um, so a few of the ensemble members um, develop a little disturbance uh, into a, a weak tropical depression or, or tropical storm. Um, again, it's just, you know, three or four out of 51 ensemble members is hardly something to be concerned about at this point. So uh, not looking as far as anything, uh, you know, to, to be worried about at this point. Um, but uh, just to keep an eye on it, the, uh, the, uh, our probability of a tropical depression uh, down there, according to the uh, EPS system, is right around 20 or 25 percent, uh, perhaps, by this weekend. So um, not something that's, uh, that's an imminent threat, uh, for sure, but, um, you know, another thing to keep in the back of your mind, keep an eye on. Uh, moving farther out, uh, you can see that a few of the ensemble members trying to develop the system in what we call the main development region of the Atlantic, so that's where... Our storms uh, usually form a bit later in the summer. That would be climatologically very unusual. We usually don't look to this part of the Atlantic to develop tropical cyclones until uh, August, really, um, maybe late July some years. So um, uh, getting a system out here this early would be very unusual, but um, you know, it is theoretically possible um, to do, especially since uh, if we look at the uh, sort of large-scale pattern here, this is a, a measure of uh, sort of tendency for upward motion at large scales over the tropics. So um, we don't have to worry too much about velocity potential anomaly, what exactly that is, why it's measured in meters squared per second times 10 to the minus 7th. Um, basically, if in these blue-green shadings here, that's where the atmosphere is generally set up for more uh, upward motion on a large scale. So that means it's easier for thunderstorms to develop. You typically get more thunderstorms, and that gives a boost to uh, potential tropical cyclones. And then the red, uh, you know, the orange-red shadings here uh, indicate a tendency towards sinking motion. So it's a little bit harder for thunderstorms to get going. Uh, so you can see that we have this uh, little, uh, this area of rising motion. It's been over the Atlantic for the past several days. That's how we got Tropical Storm Cristobal. This sort of batch of upward motion uh, really helped out in developing Cristobal. It's basically going to move into eastern Africa, the western Indian Ocean, and basically just sit there for uh, basically the middle part of June uh, into uh, possibly later in June. Um, and that is what that's going to do is, is it's going to um, mean that the African easterly waves, uh, again, we usually don't look for those to develop until July, August. Uh, we might actually get a few of them uh, a little bit earlier in the season this year, given the assist from this large-scale pattern. So uh, I wouldn't be shocked to see a stronger uh, easterly wave emerge off of Africa, uh, perhaps the third, fourth week of June here. Um, again, I don't think that that would be a, a likely outcome as far as tropical cyclone development, uh, and certainly I don't think that it's something that uh, we have to worry about in the U.S., but uh, just something to keep half an eye on, especially if this pattern persists later into the summer. Uh, you know, if uh, if I were looking at this and it was August 15th, 
um, and this forecast was for early September, I would definitely say uh, start uh, ringing the alarm bells for possible major hurricane activity. But uh, we're still in uh, early June, so uh, nothing uh, imminently uh, uh, worth worrying about at this point. Um, so that's uh, about it. Uh, we've now taken a look at a uh, possible uh, subtropical system south of Bermuda. We've taken a look at a possible um, to perhaps unlikely uh, system developing in the Caribbean uh, roughly in a week's time. Uh, and then we've taken a look at the larger scale pattern um, that uh, may favor a, an unusual early season storm in the eastern or central Atlantic. Uh, so that'll do it for today's video. Um, I will have another one this time next week, uh, whether there's a storm to talk about or not. And of course, if there is a storm, if, uh, if that, uh, especially if that system down the Western Caribbean develops and might bring heavy rain or, or gusty winds to Florida, uh, I'll be talking about it on the blog. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope to see you again next week.